The views expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Welcome to Insights, I'm Sherry Stewart. We have two interviews to bring you this week. The first is with Dr. Scott Moore. He is the Oscoda Area School Superintendent. We'll also be speaking with Dan O'Connor. He is the Superintendent of Alcona Community Schools. Well, you'll notice that we're doing something different this week as well, in keeping with the recommendations by the Centers for Disease Control to limit the spread of coronavirus, we are conducting our interviews via FaceTime as well as Zoom. So with that, we want to get right into this week's interviews. Well, Dr. Moore, I want to thank you for joining us today. And I do want to mention that you're also being joined by Jana Stepp. She is the technology director for Oscoda Schools. And we know that she is in the background helping out. So we also want to mention her and welcome her to the broadcast today. Thank you very much. We're grateful to be here. Absolutely. So the first question on our minds, on everyone's minds, we believe, is how are the children doing? How are the children, the parents, your educators, how is everyone doing in your district? What is the feedback that you're getting, sir? Well, I, I believe that people are overcome with a lot of uncertainty, and I think that can create a lot of anxiety. And I, I think that people in this time, um, we've had a lot of points of leadership that we can look to for inspiration. People have really stepped up and done a fantastic job and demonstrated a lot of courage in this time by making sure that students are still getting fed and we have bus drivers and we have dietary workers and we have custodians and we have community volunteers uh, that have been here uh, still in their practicing social distancing but uh, we're we're delivering upwards of you know 300 students uh, meals uh, on a regular basis and that number's climbing uh, every day that this goes on so um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty and, and that creates a lot of anxiousness. Um, I, th I think that a lot of educators are concerned about continuing to get paid and working things through and, and the same with every occupation right now. Uh, so I think people are overcome with a lot, a lot of fear of the unknown, but we've been trying hard to maintain here and, and be, be a rock and, and, and provide good service to people. Absolutely, sir. And with that, as you say, uh, the anxiety from pretty much every angle in your mind, then how important is leadership? What are you doing uh, to, ass to assure uh, folks that uh, everybody's doing the best that they can do? As you said, you're providing meals to your students. What types of programs do you have in place uh, to help them? Sure. Well, right now we have uh, Two, two primary focuses as the school district. One is that we are looking at making sure that people are fed. That's, that's been something that has uh, become the responsibility of the school throughout this crisis. And, and we aren't just looking at feeding the kids. Yesterday we worked with our community food giveaway, which is the local pastors get together and they, every, every month, this is just something that they do is on our campus, they deliver over 300 families uh, that don't have students. They deliver them food uh, on a monthly basis. So we're working with the community. Uh, we're working with Oscoda Rotary, the Lions Group. Uh, we're also working with the United Way, uh, Oscoda Backpack Food Giveaway. We have a lot of different groups that have been very supportive of trying to make sure that our community uh, can continue to get the basic necessities that they have throughout this trial and um, so we're grateful for that in addition to that jan has done a really good job of trying to get information that we've solicited from our families to ascertain uh, what they have for internet access because as a school district we cannot deliver education to kids uh, that that would be something that we could count uh, in, unless it's accessible to every single student and that's really challenging to do and when you take a look at where we're at, we've distributed a survey, survey out and we did it via internet and also phone. And we got about half of our families that responded uh, to just to find out what they have for accessibility. 
in regards to internet. Uh, we're going to look at trying to acquire some more data, even get it more concrete, but roughly about 8% of our families that reported do not have internet right now. So delivering instruction and making it accessible equally to all of our students is, is, is a real challenge in Northeast Michigan, that's for sure. Mm hmm. That that definitely is challenging. So with that, that leads me to my next question. Then I know there is a lot of a concern about um, what this will do for students in terms of this academic year. Are you hearing anything from the state level in terms of uh, will this year even be counted? What is the dialogue going on around that? Because obviously people have a lot of concern about this. Absolutely. I've had very good conversations. Uh, I, I'd like to uh, say Senator Stamas has been very good in terms of taking our calls the day uh, that the governor ended up choosing to close the schools down. I called Senator Stamas. He answered right away. We had a, a really good conversation, and uh, Representative Aller has been in contact uh, with us on her own accord. So they've really been reaching out and trying to support, so we're grateful for that. Unfortunately, it appears that in Lansing, they have a major gridlock in regards to uh, when they're going to convene, and they absolutely have to work at the State Aid Act. And once the State Aid Act uh, gets looked at and taken care of by Congress, I think that uh, then we'll be able to have some answers to those questions. But the reality is, is from Oscoda, Alpena, Alcona, Bay City, it's going to be very challenging for us to know what's going to happen or for any one person to know what's going to happen until the legislature and the governor have an opportunity to do that. And the governor has to be incredibly occupied right now. So our thoughts and prayers are with her through this whole thing as she's she's working through. Mm -hmm. Understood. Well, Dr. Moore, we are going to take a quick break. We will be back to continue our conversation. We'll talk about uh, some of the technology that is available to your students. Um, are there some other resources that your families um, in that district can tap into? We'll talk all about that when we come back. Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation today with Dr. Moore, uh, superintendent of Oscoda Area Schools. And we want to move into our discussion about the uh, technology, the uh, educational packets that your students are, uh, have been given as we are out of school. How is that working and how can they best use technology uh, to carry on, to continue on with their education, sir? Absolutely. I think it's going to vary by grade level. Over at Richardson Elementary School, which is students kindergarten through sixth grade, what we've done is our principal team has gotten learning challenges together uh, that they send out several times a week through the internet to, to families, and we have a lot of students who have been participating in that. So that's been very positive. In addition to that, a lot of the teachers at Richardson have on their own accord and initiative given a lot of experiences and opportunities to kids to, to access. Um, we've also asked uh, families if they can't get access to things to contact our central office at 989-739-2033 uh, to be able to uh, help us to be able to try and serve them a little better throughout this, this challenge. So that's been one of the things that we've done. And then for our older kids, uh, a lot of our students have the opportunity to be dual enrolled and are going to college also at Alpena Community College. And Alpena Community College has been delivering instruction through online uh, platforms uh, during this time period. So a lot of our uh, students in 11th and 12th grade have been able to, to continue on in their college progression, which is a very positive deal. But in that they're college students, the rules in terms of providing internet to everybody and things of that nature don't apply because so, they're dual enrolled. Uh, so they've been able to continue on in their in that way. And as far as other students at the, the high school and uh, middle school level, we have what's called Khan Academy, which mm -hmm. is uh, has a tremendous amount of activities that are relative to it that our students have uh, have access to. So Mr. Allison, the principal here, and Mr. Bookinger, the assistant principal, have been working to get those messages out to kids. And also we've had some teachers that have independently sent some things along and 
we're grateful for all the optional opportunities that the educators have been able to provide. Absolutely. Sir, what uh, do you think will be some of our learnings as we come away from this? Uh, definitely for our, our, obviously, our educational systems. I, I believe that you all probably have uh, crisis communication plans in place, but this is something totally off a whole nother scale, if you will. What are your learnings to date, and what do you think people will do going forward, definitely our educators and superintendents such as yourself? Absolutely. Um, I think that one of the things that we're, we're learning is, you know, that we have to be able to uh, uh, find alternative ways to educate rather than just the brick and mortar way. Mm -hmm. And we, do, we, we have a lot of that in place already. Our students have the capability to take online classes, and many of them are already. And so that's a very positive piece. Um, if we have to become more reliant on technology, we have to have a plan that allows us to do that. But I don't want to put a facade up and let people think that you can get the same thing in terms of an educational experience via a screen that you can in person. I, I think that human dynamic is so important. And I think one of the takeaways that I really hope people understand through this is, is people are meant to socialize and work together and and, and be a part of a community. And, and sometimes the community is gonna have to change and evolve, and we understand that and we have to work with it. But I really hope that people don't lose sight of the value of, of connecting and interacting with one another in a, in a legitimate face-to-face -face environment. And, and personally, that just one of the hopes that I, I, I feel that people should consider keeping close. Mm -hmm. um, but we are in communication with our families on a regular basis, trying to give them optional uh, learning activities. Now, if uh, I believe the date to go back to school is right now, it's the, the 13th of April. So how ready are you having uh, to set things in place so that you can uh, be ready to receive that groundswell so that if we do get the go ahead, what are your plans uh, to, to meet that deadline? Well, I, I think we have a lot of things in place already in regards to just integrating back in. Um, we're going to be looking at coming back on that Tuesday because of Easter Monday for mm -hmm. sure. So that that would be one of the first pieces is, is we'd have another day to prepare on our own. Um, but at, at the other end of it, um, we've already worked at making sure deep cleanings transpired here at the school. Uh, we've made sure to integrate a lot more hand sanitizers than what we already had. Uh, we have... Uh, tissue stations around that have been introduced. Um, we've, we've really tried to be conscious about really enhancing our, our safety protocols in regards to um, access to, to sanitizer and, and things of that nature for sure. Mm -hmm. That is so important to know that you have uh, basically put extra precautions in place, those safety measures that we're sure that parents will have questions and students will have questions about that going forward. Absolutely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, sir, we want to thank you for, for joining us today. We wish all of the folks um, in your district the best, the parents, the students, and certainly you and the, and the educators there that we know that you're doing a double duty, a lot of heavy lifting to get students through uh, this time period. So we just want to applaud you. Uh, wish, we wish you all the best and, and ask that you all stay safe. Thank you very much. And I want to reference back to the, the packets. I think that I might have had a little bit of confusion in regards to that. But if, if they are looking for the extra uh, resources, they can contact either one of the principals at Richardson Elementary School um, for at uh, PICLA, T-P-I-C-H-L-A-T, at iscotaschools.org, or uh, Brooks R at... Um, Ascotaschools.org, B R O O K S R at Ascotaschools.org. Um, so either one of those would be options if they were looking to access materials that otherwise they wouldn't be able to, to get online. I wanted to make sure that um, that part was clarifying. Okay, absolutely. Thank you so much again, sir. All right, thank you and take care. Thank you. Well, joining me now is Dan O'Connor, Superintendent of Alcona Community Schools. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, glad to be here and uh, 
Hope you guys are all well in your studio. Likewise, hopefully everyone is doing well today uh, in your district, and that obviously is what we want to talk about. So first off, sir, how is everyone doing? What is the feedback that you're getting from, uh, say, your educators, your students, of course, and also the parents? I, you know, I definitely think people are hanging in there and, and doing the best they can at trying to stay positive, but also trying to abide by uh, the governor's, you know, stay safe and stay home order as well. I think the educators are, you know, really starting to miss their students at this point. I think it's it's really settling in that, you know, this is, uh, you know, obviously going into week two and, you know, with spring break and another week added on, I think the reality is hitting that this is, you know, a month or more of, of time away from school is, is uh, starting to become more real. I think if there were no other terms better than that. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're, we're having to use technology ourselves today to conduct this interview. How are your, is your district making the best use of technology for your students? Are you having them go online? How are they still able to complete their studies and still be engaged academically? You know, at this point, we've only asked our students uh, to do things as optional. So we, we aren't able to count this time as instructional, you know, per the state. So we've uh, given students and families resources, both online, some, you know, very easy to do, you know, hand, paper, pencil pieces, just to try to allow them the opportunities to uh, do some learning at home. But at this point, you know, nothing's required. You know, we've communicated out a, a pretty good list of resources for them and are essentially, in the meantime, planning on the back end of things in case, uh, you know, we are essentially uh, freed up to do some more virtual learning or uh, correspondence or other, you know, method of uh, trying to educate students if this crisis goes on longer and schools are closed through the rest of April and May. Mm -hmm. Now, I asked this question of Dr. Scott Moore earlier, um, and what are you hearing at the, the state level in terms of how uh, this makeshift uh, education, if you will, will that count towards students? How will that impact, say, you have seniors graduating? Will this count? What does that look like for you? Are you hearing anything? Are you getting any direction there? No direction thus far. I mean, you know, we've encouraged our uh, our credit recovery students, seniors that might be a little bit behind in credits to try to make sure that they're tackling those courses at this point. And as for their current caseload or courses, you know, the classes are scheduled in during the day. You know, we, we haven't put out uh, required work for them to complete at this point. You know, we're kind of treating the, the school closure stretch as excuse days, you know, thus far for students in terms of required work, really trying to encourage students to go back and complete work they're missing. You know, a lot of our teachers are communicating with students that way as well. So we're, we're just trying to focus on things that we know they're already uh, used to and are able to, to work on at this point so that you know, we can tackle those pieces in case we, if, if and when we do get back at it, uh, we can start at a, a level ground uh, point. Well, we know that um, many times people are more resilient than what we ever have had to be um, in times of crisis. Um, but in this case, what are some of the learnings that you think you will come away with? This is something new for practically everyone, of course. What are some of your, your top learnings that you see that you will walk away with? Well, I, you know, one of the biggest things that we're working on as a district right now, we have multiple staff members uh, essentially contacting families one-on-one -on -one and staff trying to assess our uh, virtual learning readiness in, in the case that this crisis would happen again. I think that is a, a piece that a piece of data that we should have been collecting, you know, all along trying to have a good sense of where our families are. Um, you know, we're a small district of 700 or so students, so it's a little easier for us to do that personal attention and, and phone calls on that front. You know, we did some uh, preliminary research, you know, we feel about 70% of our staff have the internet speeds at home to be able to facilitate virtual learning if, if asked to do that. About 20%, you know, have some form of high speed internet with data caps that would limit, you know, how much they could try to connect with students and be able to produce online learning materials. And about 10% of our teaching staff have no internet at home at all. Our students, you know, our picture is a little more uh, bleak. Uh, about 50% of our students could sustain you know, unlimited uh, internet at home and be able to access the amount of videos and coursework that would need to be completed. About 30% have some internet, high speed internet at home, but are all data capped. So they're gonna be limited on what they could access, you know, during the, the day. And 20% and of our students have no internet at all. So, you know, those are, those are real obstacles, both on the staff's end, as well as the student's end. If uh, this were to go on longer and we try to adjust our, 
you know, instructional methods, being able to use some different pieces. Now, I know many of the, the districts uh, statewide are still providing uh, some uh, food assistance to, to uh, children and their families. Are you guys are also doing that as well? Yeah, we, we are. Uh, we delivered last week. We're delivering again this week. You know, we have spring break next week, so we're just going to do a grab and go uh, during spring break. But obviously, you know, depending on how the virus transmits to Northeast Michigan, we're, we have some work to do to figure out what that looks like in the long term to be able to keep both the families, you know, safe as well as our staff as well. So they're, uh, I think it's day to day and week to week at this point as we evaluate our options moving forward. But, you know, hopefully in the meantime, that's helped families a little bit with just navigating the, the crisis of trying to provide food and be able to uh, keep things as routine as possible at home. Mm -hmm. Now, as we wrap up uh, today, uh, Mr. O'Connor, what do you have a special message for um, your students and the families? Do you have a, me a special message of encouragement? I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. You know, I, we, we care about them so much right now, and I think it just it breaks a lot of our hearts right now that we're in this situation. We weren't even really able to say goodbye um, towards the end of that last week as we closed the Friday, you know, the morning after the governor made her announcement. So a lot of our, our staff just wants to be able to communicate to those students that we care about you. You know, we want, we, we want you to check in with us. If we're trying to communicate with you and, you know, if they need something, I think probably the biggest thing, they have all of our contact information and contact the district office. We have enough connections regionally to try to be able to help families in need. So, you know, the biggest thing is we, we care about you and if you need help, we're here to try to do what we can during this time. If it's not educational resources, at least we can try to connect you with food or people to be able to help get through this difficult time. All right. Well, we thank you so much for that, uh, Mr. O'Connor. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, we send well wishes to uh, all of the folks, um, the students, of course, the parents and the educators, and you yourself, of course. I'll send you the best wishes, and um, hopefully everyone gets through this and to stay safe, and hopefully we can get back to normal much sooner than later. Absolutely, absolutely. Take care. Well, that does it for this week's Insights. Thank you for watching. If you have a question, comment, or story idea for us at Insights, we'd love to hear from you. You can email that to us at news at wbkb11.com. We wish you well, and we hope that you stay safe. Thank you again for watching. I'm Sherry Stewart. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.